After months of hard work, Foundry VTT version 10 is out and it is jam-packed with new features like vision and detection modes, a brand new journal system, ping support, tours for new users, and tons more. Over the next 8 minutes, we're going to look at an overview of the biggest features and we'll be releasing more videos covering some of them in more depth soon. Speaking of being covered, I'm covered in the awesome new Foundry VTT official merch, which you can check out at the link in the description. Before you rush off to buy merch or try V10 though, be sure to back up your data because there's no way to migrate back to V9. There will be a link in the description that walks you through how to do it and to see if your modules are updated to work in V10. With that out of the way, let's get started. No Foundry update is complete without huge improvements to vision, lighting, and the canvas, and V10 is no different. There are subtle improvements, like how a token now previews its changes as you make them, or that when you turn a token it now smoothly animates. And there are much bigger changes, like the new vision and detection modes. Your token's vision mode controls how it sees the world. Basic vision is what you're used to from V9, but by changing to dark vision, unlit areas will fade to black and white, while lit areas remain in full color. There are other modes as well, like Trimmer Sense, Monochromatic, and Light Amplification, and the API allows game systems and modules to add even more. But vision is more than just how you see, it's also what you can detect. That's where detection modes come in. By default, you'll get a basic sight, which lets you detect any visible creatures, but let's say our token has Dark Vision and Trimmer Sense, so we can add the Feel Trimmer detection mode, and suddenly our token can detect two new creatures that were previously invisible, even though one of them is behind a wall. If you look closely at these tokens, you can also see how they were detected. Tokens you can see with Basic Sight are simply visible, whereas tokens detected with Feel Trimmer have a unique animation. If you were to change detection modes from Field Trimmer to Sense All, the animation changes so you can always know how you're detecting each token. That's not all though. If we elevate one of those tokens off of the ground, suddenly we can't detect it any longer because Basic Sight can't detect invisible creatures or go through walls, and Trimmer Sense can't detect a creature that's not on the ground. If you want to customize the appearance of your vision even further, you can look under the advanced options where the new instant preview makes it easy to see what the end result will be. Now that you've tweaked your vision and discovered these two invisible creatures, what if you want to tell your party where they are? That's where pings come into play. You can now long press anywhere on the canvas to produce a ping that uses your player color so everyone can pay attention to that spot and know who called it out. If someone is super zoomed in or looking elsewhere on the map, they'll even get a directional arrow telling them where to look. If you hold Alt or Option on a Mac while long pressing, you can even do a more emphatic ping. For Game Masters, sometimes emphatic isn't enough though, and you just need to shift your player's attention. If that's the case, you can hold Shift and long press, and it will shift your player's view to where you clicked and match your zoom level so you can make sure everyone is seeing what you want them to. Let's shift over to another scene now and check out one last cool canvas feature. In V9, we introduced overhead tiles that your token can go underneath, and in V10, you can now go on top of those overhead tiles as well. By setting the tile's elevation and your token's elevation, you can now go above or under any overhead tile, including the foreground layer. That means you can climb a tree or go on top of a roof. Running a game requires a lot more than just fancy scenes though, and we have some amazing changes to the journal system to make the Foundry writing and reading experience much better. To show off the new journal system, let's take a look at Demon Queen Awakens, our adventure which has been updated to use V10's features. Each journal is now more like a book with its content split into pages, so there's 6 journals now rather than 47. You can either view the pages one by one, or combine them into a scrolling multi-page view. As you scroll, the pages that you have in view are highlighted, and you can see an index of the headings in that page. Clicking on any of the headings will even take you directly to that section. Once you're on the right page, you can save some room by collapsing the sidebar so you can focus on just what's important. Journal pages can have different types as well. Everything you've seen so far has just been using regular text and image pages, but the new journal system also adds support for PDF pages so you can upload your own documents for easy access right in Foundry, and video pages that can contain videos you've uploaded, or embeds directly from YouTube. You can even pin journal pages directly to scenes, just like you can with journals. There are also improvements to how you share journals. You can either use the Show Players button at the top to share the entire journal, 
or you can right click on a page and show just that page. You can even control which players you want to show it to and give them ownership at the same time, which will be perfect for handouts that you want them to be able to access again later. That's enough about how to read journals though, what's it like to write in one? Foundry now supports three different ways of writing content. The new default way is using ProseMirror, an awesome and very extensible text editor, but we also added support for a new markdown editor, and of course we still support, for now at least, TinyMCE. The writing experience should feel very familiar, but with some cool new tricks like secret blocks that you can actually use to hide and reveal information to your players, as well as collaborative editing. As you can see in the toolbar, another user is now accessing this journal page and editing it at the same time as me. This should make it easy to share notes, keep a party log, and tons more. We're running low on time though, so let's take a quick tour of tours, tooltips, and the adventure document. Foundry now supports helpful tours and tooltips, some of which will launch automatically and others which can be found in the tour management UI. When a new world is created, for example, users will be prompted to go through a UI overview and optionally be able to start exploring other tours that break down Foundry's features. The Tours API is also open for system and module developers to build their own tours to guide you through their features. A similarly helpful feature is the tooltip system that will give you more information about an element when you hover over it, like the sidebar tabs. There are also other cool uses for tooltips, like when a GM hovers over a scene with a navigation name, they'll see the original scene name as well. Last but not least, we have the adventure document. The adventure document should make it much easier to create and import foundry-ready adventures. If you've picked up Demon Queen Awakens, the Pathfinder Beginner Box, or Abomination Vaults, you've already gotten a taste of how it works. But for everyone else, when you install the module that contains an adventure document, it will appear here in your compendium packs. Once you open it, you'll see the adventures that are available, and clicking on one will let you set some options and import it into your world. Once everything is imported, you'll see that the folder structure is still there, journal entries are all properly linked, and everything works as expected. Here's how easy it is to build an adventure. Just create an adventure compendium pack for your module, open it up, and you'll see an option to create adventure. Press that, fill out your adventure name, give it a banner image, a caption, and describe your adventure. Then jump over to the contents tab and start dragging things from your sidebar into the window and you'll see everything showing up. Once you've added all of your content, just press build adventure and you'll be done. If you need to make changes, you can right click on the adventure and rebuild it. Then you can go to the contents tab again, delete the content you don't want included, and add the content that you do want. Rebuild the adventure and you're done. And just like that, this video is done too. Thank you so much for being a supporter of Foundry VTT, watching this video, and for backing up your content before trying V10. Happy gaming, everybody.